Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. Please like and subscribe to us on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Are you ready to start the show? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about, the hot topic, John Tavares' free agency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who aren't super you know, into hockey or into the Sharks, maybe casual fans, how big of a deal is it for Tavares to become in San Jose? Is he, you know, just you know, some player? Mm. Is he going to be? Is he really that good? Is mm. it really going to change the team? What do you think? I mean, I think he's he's one of those players that you add him to the team, and he's automatically among the top players on your team. Um, he's talented. He's not exactly the most fleet of foot, but his his hands. If you've ever seen him stick handling uh, before a game, uh, where they usually have the warm ups mm -hmm. before, and they're they're taking shots and whatnot. He's sitting at the blue line, and he's got his stick, and, and he's just doing this, and it's just insane how fast he's moving. He's got silky mitts. It's, so it's kind of like thing. Patrick Kane, when Patrick Kane was going through all the pucks. And yeah, actually, I, I mean, looking at the clips, it almost looks better than Patrick Kane, <laughs> but hey, maybe I'm a little biased because we might be able to land the guy, right. so who yeah. knows. <laughs> but um, I think that Tavares is such a great fit in San Jose. And there's several reasons why. One, you've got our top center, Joe Thornton, who he's got two reconstructed knees now. Um, he's 37, 38 yeah. years old, right? Yeah. Um, he's doing one-year contracts now. So uh, the guy's basically on his way out. I love him. He's a great character guy. But I just think that, you know, it's, it's a great time to have a replacement come in. And what better replacement than a number one center who's basically an all-star in the league yep. come in, take over, take the reins? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, he's going to fit in well with the Sharks players. Uh, Thornton, he's going to sign a team-friendly deal, apparently. So um, he's going to look good, and he won't have to be the number one center anymore. He doesn't have the speed. He still has the mitts. He still right. has the passing. Right. Um, putting Joe Thornton on a second or even a third line is going to be insane because nobody's going to be able to match that. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. And the other thing about uh, Tavares is he's coming into a team that already has Olympians and All-Stars. Um, surrounding him and he doesn't have to be like you said the only guy the number one guy he's one of the number one guys yeah. if you will on the team and I think that's gonna help him make the decision to come to San Jose to be <laughs> honest with you I mean we've heard rumors with you know him maybe going uh, back to the Islanders we've heard Toronto making a pitch um, actually you could talk about that the uh, the deal <laughs> that they were trying to get uh, with so him. I heard there's a bunch of rumors going around yeah um, one I heard today was Toronto was possibly gonna sign him to a one-year deal and what that would do is is uh, under the collective bargaining agreement um, teams that own the player and they go to free agency they're allowed to sign him up to eight years mm -hmm. so and only the islanders can sign him to eight-year contract so what toronto is going to do is sign him to a one-year contract and then next year sign him to an eight-year contract which i think is brilliant i yeah. never even thought of doing that it's a nice way to get around the the, the limitation totally. where a team can only offer a free agent that's coming from another team in seven seven years right yeah and i'm surprised lou lamorello didn't think of that because he's the one that always finds the <laughs> loopholes on everything <laughs> awesome which fitting enough is he is now the gm of the islanders right so right. that's that's probably a, a a big key for uh for john to maybe stay in new york new york has been a tumultuous franchise to Not say the least degree, his yeah. entire career right um they've bounced between the coliseum in nassau mm -hmm. and um barclay center in brooklyn i believe it is yeah, yeah. um if you've ever watched the game, an Islander game on TV, uh, the Brooklyn Nets arena right. is set up for basketball and not hockey. Yeah, yeah. So instead of it being centered, it's off center for the ice and it butts up. So if you ever watch a game on TV, you, you look and you go, why is there a car parked <laughs> on the glass? Those are very expensive seats because the way the arena is built and seating is there. If you sit in those first couple rows, you're blocked. You can't see the goal. You can't see up to the blue line. That's why there's <laughs> nobody sitting there. There's a car literally parked on the glass in the wow. corner wow. Uh, as an advertisement. Um, yeah, you usually see that in international play. Yeah. With the cars parked on the glass right. for advertisement purposes. Yeah, but, it's, yeah. it's a terrible... You don't have a home arena. John, come to San Jose. <laughs> Just please come to San Jose. Our arena is probably the third or fourth oldest arena in the NHL, I would say, yeah. which is yeah. crazy because yeah. it was built in 1994. Mm -hmm. But it's still nice. I mean, it's better than the Coliseum. It's yeah. better than not having a home. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing too is, uh, you know, you've got, we talked about all-stars and Olympians surrounding him. You know, guys like Mark Edward Vlasic, guys mm -hmm. like Brent Burns. 
um, guys like Joe Pavelski. Thornton, if he comes back again, um, he's kind of nearing the end of it. But, I mean, the guy is still one of those players that is a difference maker on the team. And, uh, you know, it's not just those guys. You look at the young players that are on the team, and they're actually able to contribute at a high level as well. It's not that they've got, you know, youth and picks and promises for right. John Tavares yeah. of how good the team can be and will be. And, again, you know, they've got a new GM, they've got a new coach, and that could be something that could lure him back. But... It's just more change yeah. in an already tumultuous situation. Mm -hmm. And they may be promising to bring more people in, but he's heard that story before, right? Oh, it's his entire career. He's been in the island. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so again, you come to a place like San Jose where uh, you're basically offered the 1C. You're mm -hmm. offered the top spot, the center spot. And you don't have to worry about everyone else around you or the picks that are going to be coming in. Our top, I mean, we were one of the deepest teams in the league. When we went into the cup with, uh, when we went to the cup against Pittsburgh, I mean, that was one of the things that they kept talking about. Yes, we got beyond speed, but our depth, we were so deep. And especially at the yeah. center position. Yeah. Now that we're losing this top center guy, what better place for him to fill in? Yeah, Tavares is going to fill in perfectly. Absolutely. He's going to fit in perfectly with the team. He's going to become the, basically what Thornton and Marlowe were for a decade with the Sharks. Right. They, were, they were up the middle, and uh, the Sharks were able to Never have to rebuild, only right. retool every year. Mm -hmm. And they miss playoffs once in the last, I think, 13 or 14 years. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You can probably fact check me on that. But yeah. um, it, it's amazing what they've done. It's amazing what Doug Wilson has done. With I, I would have to agree. I think it was uh, a streak of what was it, 10, 10 years or something, I think, that they had made the playoffs straight. Then they missed one, and we're back to making the playoffs all over again. Right. And I, I can't foresee a situation where John Tavares comes to San Jose, and all of a sudden we start missing playoffs. Yeah. Um, he, again, all he has to do is show up and play. That, that's it. He doesn't have to be the guy. So um, I think with that, we're going to introduce the fresh catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is kind of where we'd like you guys to hashtag uh, or use the hashtag in the comments on, on YouTube down below. Join the discussion with us. Absolutely. And so the hashtag for this week will be Tavares to San Jose or Tavares to SJ, we'll just say. Yeah, sure. So um, use that hashtag, put it in the comments. We'd love to talk with you guys in the comments down below. So hope to see you there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other thing let's talk about is the price it's going to cost. Oh, to get right, Tavares. right, yeah. Right now, the rumor is that uh, the Islanders offered an eight-year deal at eighty-eight million dollars. Right. So eleven dollars, eleven eleven dollars, eleven million dollars, <laughs> eleven million dollars a year. Um, that's kind of the benchmark of what any team is going to have to beat. And um, looking around the league, I mean, even ESPN, I think, had ranked the Sharks as the number one place to land Tavares. Mm -hmm. um, they're in a very good spot, I think, uh, after buying out Paul Martin and um, uh, trading away Bodker. Bodker. Yeah. That freed $4 up. million dollars for Bodker and yeah. the buyout freed up, what was it, $2 million? I think it was supposed to be 2 and it actually ended up being 3 so it was a little bit more. Nice. So I think they have a close to $19 million in yeah. space. Yeah. So they also have to sign Hurdle. Yes. And uh, Tierney. Tierney. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to that's gonna ding into a little bit, but he's set up. I think very well. Right. Um, and, and I think with, with Tierney and Hurdle, the last news we heard about those two was that they had been offered uh, qualifying offers um, by Doug Wilson. So basically what that means is if another team wants to make them a better offer, the Sharks would have to match that offer in order to retain those players. So if somebody comes in and wants to offer Hurdle $7 million or whatever for however mm -hmm. many years, if we can't match that, then Hurdle basically gets taken by whichever other team. But... In return, we get picks. Get, depending on the salary, yeah. it's, it's a different yeah. um, compensation of picks. Yeah, so depending on what the salary is that is offered to him, we would get some amount of picks in return, which is great. But you're also losing a player like right. a Hurdle or a Tierney. And so when we talk about price, it's not just how much would be offered John Tavares. It's what's the price, what's the cost to the team. Yep. And looking at potentially losing depth players, that was one of the things we just talked about, was mm -hmm. the players, uh, I'm sorry, the, the team has such depth all the way through. If we're starting to lose players, potentially, to bring in this big fish, mm -hmm. does that hurt us or help us more in the long run? And I, I'm inclined to say that losing a guy like Hurdle, and I think Tyranny is very underrated. Yeah, um, I agree. Losing a guy like Tyranny is going to be 
not like devastating, but it's a it's a huge blow. As much as people may may or may not like the guy and think maybe he's like a fourth line guy. I don't think he's a fourth line player. I think Hurl? we play him on no, not Hurl, sorry, oh. Tierney. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> what? did I say Hurl? Sorry. Uh, so Tierney being a fourth line guy, I don't see him as a fourth line guy. I yeah. think he could honestly play up close to like the second line. The guy's very skilled. I think he's a good third line center who could fill in on second for an injury. Absolutely, absolutely, and won't look out of place. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so if we if we're missing these guys, if we're missing a, a Hurdle or if we're missing a Tierney because we can't sign them anymore because of this giant contract. Now, again, when we were first talking about Tavares, we were saying, estimating somewhere in the $10.5 million range. Right. And that's close to what Toronto had offered. Obviously, Toronto was able to offer that extra year. Islanders. Or, I'm sorry, the Islanders. Yeah. Toronto is trying to get around right. that by doing the one year and then do the eight years. But the Islanders uh, are able to offer that that eighth year. Correct. Um, so it sounds like in San Jose, that they would have to offer something closer to like the 12 to 13 million range? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think 12, maybe 12 and a half million. Mm-hmm. And uh, that would land him, I think. Um, I To me, I'm. you look at the other teams that are in the running, um, and LA was one of the teams, and they mm-hmm. signed Kovalchuk. Right. So I think that pretty much put them out of the running mm-hmm. to get Tavares. Um, most other teams don't have the cap space that the Sharks do. Right. And most other teams that do have the cap space also have a slew of other players to sign. We only have right. Hurdle and Tierney. That's it. This year, yeah. This year. Right. Ne- next year. Next year is going to be <laughs> next crazy. Next year's a train wreck. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it, let's say the Sharks win a cup. They get to Vars. They win a cup, right? Yeah. Thornton might retire. Yeah. His knees might be completely shot. That's true. And yeah. he might not. Or maybe he goes somewhere else. Maybe but he's I th- like, I could play another year or two. Yeah. Um, you know, Thornton's not the kind of player that I think... Um, is a bang bang kind of player. He doesn't mm-hmm. he doesn't go really hard into right. anything. So regardless, like his knees, both those injuries are kind of freak accidents. They weren't like I don't know. Yeah. It, it sucks. It, I feel terrible yeah. for him. But he's also older. Right. Um, you know, you never know how how her knees are going to hold up. Mm-hmm. He is the kind of player that he doesn't need good knees. He could play <laughs> yeah. on two broken knees and I, he'd still be effective. I would agree with you on that. Yeah. I mean, he's never really been the most fleet of foot player in, in the first place. Yeah. Um, he's always been just that big body that's hard to get the puck off of. Mm-hmm. And he uh, puck protects very well. But he always seems to find that open man. I, I'll never forget <laughs> the Marlow pass. The Marlow pass. <laughs> if you if you don't know what we're talking about, maybe we can put a link or Dallas something Stars. down below. Or, yeah. I think it was in Dallas. He Cross eyes, no look pass against the board on his backhand. backhand. Yeah, it's a Marlow wide open on the net yeah. on the opposite side. It's ridiculous. Really, really crazy. I mean, and that's just what the guy does, right? Um, he makes everyone around him better, even though he's he can't really jump up in the play. Um, so, yeah, I would I would agree. I mean, I, I feel like Thornton again. This is uh, going back to what we said previously. I think with Thornton and his knees and everything else, I, I don't think he has many more years left. This may be the last contract that he signs. Um, he and says yeah, he bleeds too. Win a cup, man. I, that's a good way yeah, to go out. Absolutely. It, you, if, at that point, you've done everything you came to, to do. Right, you've accomplished everything you wanted to accomplish. He's practically punched his ticket into the Hall of Fame. He's yeah. going no matter what. And it was a crime. I think it was a year ago hmm. that uh, I think it was the NHL came out with the top 100 players, and he wasn't on it. Oh yeah, that's. Are you right, kidding yeah. me? How is he not on the? Yeah, that's a whole other story. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and and on the topic of Kovalchuk, I I feel like. That could be an indication, like a good indication for the Sharks, because I know that they were they were in the Kovalchuk sweepstakes as well, mm-hmm. at least in part. And if Kovalchuk has already signed with the Kings, that could it could have been in his mind that well, the Sharks aren't going to sign me, right? So I'll go to the next best thing. Or it could have been the Kings saying we're not going to wait for Tavares. We don't think we're going to get it. it. Yeah. So we're going to go for Kovalchuk, who is probably the, one of the top the next top right. tier of guys uh, right. coming back. So, I mean, and in both cases, really what that says is the Sharks are going heavier for somebody else, yeah. and obviously, hopefully, that somebody else is that is John Tavares. Right, so. yeah. So the other the other topic we're going to talk about is um, if we if the Sharks don't get Tavares, who, what do we need? Consolation prizes. Yeah, yeah. consolation prizes. Yeah. Who should the Sharks go after? And to be honest with you, I think even if we did get Kovalchuk, I think he would have been a consolation prize, really. Oh, I mean, totally. he's, he's great, don't get me wrong, and especially at that age, he's phenomenal at that age. But he wanted a Marlow deal. Yeah. He wanted a three-year deal at, I think he got $6 million, same as so no, Marlow got $3 million. He's dead to me, he's in L.A., so yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so other other 
rumors out there right. is um, is uh, Carlson still in Ottawa yep. and might be out, and that was a whole fiasco with his uh, wife and Mike Hoffman and Mike Hoffman's girlfriend or fiance or somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole. I'm not even going to get into that yeah, right here, but <laughs> just not cool. So now Hoffman is was actually traded to the Sharks, right? And then and we would just love having him here. <laughs> um, it's it's one of those. He's one of those players uh, that. Is really dynamic and he's a great goal scorer. The Go tribute ahead. video of yeah. him was just magnificent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he got traded to Florida uh, immediately. Got yeah, so. that was part of the uh, part of the Bodker trade right. to Ottawa. So, um, uh, so he still wants out. Carlson still wants out. Now I don't know if Carlson would be awesome. Imagine having Carlson and Burns on the back end. Two, yeah. two of the last three Norris Trophy winners. Yes, absolutely crazy. But. I don't think it would work. <laughs> it would not work. I don't. I, I don't think. Yeah. They're both not known for their defensive prowess. Right, right. So you would have to split them up. You wouldn't be able to play them together other than the power play. Yeah. So you. Well, you'd split them on the power play though, wouldn't you? You'd put one you'd on think? one and two on the other one too. Ah, I'd over. I'd put them both on there. Okay. So how about your forwards? I think you make the second line, second power play line, yeah. with more forwards and one. Defense. I guess. Yeah. You want Carlson and Burns out there? They're just gonna. They would ruin teams. Are you kidding? Putting those two on the point? I just think you want to spread the talent out. And then you have, if you have Joe Thornton on the top line, yeah. on the top power well, play, uh, yeah. he likes right-handed shots. True. And he's at Pavelski, Burns, yeah. and Carlson. Right. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that would be pretty pretty lethal. And then yeah. throw Timo Meyer on there. He's just got just put him everybody's got a right-handed <laughs> yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, wait, we just got done talking about John Tavares. You're going right, to put him on the yeah, second yeah, power yeah, play? Yeah, sorry. See what I'm saying? Yeah. We got, yeah. No, no, no. And that's this is a consolation. Good, this is consolation. Absolutely. Price. If but we that, did not get Tavares. If we're going to go back to, well, okay, fair enough, if we didn't. But uh, let's go back to that real quick, and then we'll touch on the consolation sure. again. Yeah, yeah. That is a really good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> to have too many players. You go, well, what about this guy? What would these right. two good, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. Again, San Jose is just so deep. Right. And and yeah, with a guy like Eric Carlson, even if we don't have Tavares, then you put Eric Carlson on there. If he's on the first power play with Burns, Okay, great. Second power play is still going to have tons of talent on it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I don't think that's realistic. No, I think it would be <laughs> it would be awesome. Yes. But uh, another guy that I think would be that could work is uh, O'Reilly out of Buffalo. Okay. He's their number one center. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's got a year left on his contract. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but he is possibly on the way out. That's the rumor. Okay. Uh, I don't know if he's ever if he's linked to San Jose or not, but. Um, Let's say we didn't get Tavares. His link to San Jose is Vander Kane. Right. Did they get Teammates, along? Teammates, I don't know if they got along. Yeah, that's <laughs> the problem. You, know, yeah. you never know. Um, it's more of uh, no Tavares. Like, we're just we're yes, going to say right, Tavar right now Tavares is off the table. Tavares signed with, with the, the Islanders. Islanders again. He probably yeah. went back to the Islanders. He's sure. playing with Marlowe in, in Toronto. <laughs> right. He's going to pull Stamkos and right. have all these people come court him. And then he goes, like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Let me know. Thanks. He just wants to know that he's wanted. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he likes to feel is. loved. Um, so Ryan O'Reilly, uh, out of Buffalo, right. he would be, to me, I think he could be a one. That's my my next question. Where so to put him? He's a one C in Buffalo. Does that make him a one C in San Jose? I think you can alternate him between the first and second line for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think he is a. He's good on both ends of the ice, so uh, okay. he wins a lot of faceoffs. He is a good playmaker. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe you bump Coacher to the top line okay. center, yeah, and then O'Reilly's your second line center. Mm -hmm. Then you have Tierney, and then you have Carlson or uh, I don't know who else. I can't think of it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what the thing is, and the stumbling point there. There's there's. So many centers that are on the Sharks. And right. Doug Wilson has a, a history of doing this, drafting mm -hmm. centers and then putting them on the wing. He's always said it's easier to put a centerman at Definitely. wing, and it's so much more difficult to teach a winger to play yeah. as a centerman. I'm sure a lot of it has to do with faceoffs, but a lot of it is a defensive well, responsibility as well. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with faceoffs. Uh, yes. Because you get one kicked out and you have another center come in, not a winger. Right. I mean, you have technically their winger, a, a, but they winger, but they've yes. centered their entire career. Right. So um, you see the Sharks do that with Pavelski was a center, mm -hmm. and now he's a winger. Yeah. So you have Pavelski and Thornton taking faceoffs. They're both very good in faceoffs, mm -hmm. and one gets kicked out. Thornton's usually the one that goes in first, and he cheats all the time. <laughs> so they're just waiting for him to cheat, right. and then they so kick get, him out, yeah. and then you get Pavelski. Right. But if they don't catch him, and he cheats, and he wins the faceoff, win-win. Yeah. So 
Um, you're right. Wilson loves to, to draft centers. In Absolutely. fact, I think this last draft we drafted three or four I think it centers. Was only centers, centers in, in terms the defense. Forwards and the defensemen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and a goalie. We got a goalie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But of of the forwards that were drafted, right. all centermen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so yeah, Ryan Ryan O'Reilly could work. Um, one thing that I uh, Stassi is another one. Yeah. Stassi is another who mm-hmm. um, he would be more of a. Almost like a Tierney third line center, I think. Okay. Um, who could jump in on the second line? Um, pro- definitely on the second power play. He's skilled mm-hmm. enough to be on the power play, and he's he's older, but he still holds his own. Right. Uh, it's funny because both like, O'Reilly and Stassen used to play in Colorado. Right. So right, they're used right. to the Pacific yeah. Division. That's right. Um, so I think that could work salary wise. We'd have to play around. Actually, yeah. actually with no Tavares, we don't have to worry about. Salary, yeah, well, without I Tavares, I don't think you have to worry about the immediate salary. Right. I think with Tavares or with uh, without Tavares, the, whoever you're signing, we have to take a look at the amount of players that are, are not signing for this season, for this season, right. but for the next. I think is it Couture and Pavelski, and, and we got some big names. I well, think that are Couture coming. Couture and. Um, Don Skoy mm-hmm. are up for extensions right. after July 1st. And from what I heard, Couture's already verbally agreed. Uh-huh. They're just going to sign the paperwork on July 1st. Right. So that's pretty much done. So we don't have to worry about Couture. He's going to be locked up. Right. Um, Don Skoy I haven't heard anything about, so mm-hmm. I don't know if he's if they have a verbal agreement or not. But even if they're locked up earlier than usual, the the fact remains, they're getting paid. They're getting right. paid more than they but were. But that doesn't kick in, in until next season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I mean. The right. next season. Next season, if you look, yeah. if you go to Cap Friendly and look at the team, mm-hmm. uh, it's a mess. It's I do not envy being in Doug Wilson's position at that point. Not for next season. No. no. Uh, there's a lot of decisions to make. It's all going to depend on how the team does. I mean, that's also a good point for the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of a... Um, Players tend to play a little bit better when it's a contract year. So uh, if everyone's on a contract, then we should be really good. <laughs> almost everyone. <laughs> yeah. And you want to play for that next contract. Right. And um, you got a lot of up and coming players, and you got a lot of players that are kind of getting towards the end of their career. So right. they're going to want to play for that last contract. They're going to want to play. The new players want to play for the big contract. Mm-hmm. Um, we're obviously. I don't think next season you're going to see the same team as this year we mm-hmm. see a lot i think a lot of big names that'll be gone um especially if Tavares is signed and all that right. cap space is gone mm-hmm. so this could be the last year that we see these sharks um the core big core group of guys that we're used to yeah um together uh next season could look a lot different yep absolutely all right let's move on and talk about doug wilson yeah uh doug wilson uh, he's been the GM for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets equal amounts of hate as well as love. Equal amounts? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little more hate. Yeah, just so. because <laughs> the hate comes through more than the love. That's very true, yeah. Um, we, I think, both are on the same page. Right. That we love Doug Wilson. Uh, we think he does a tremendous job. Mm-hmm. Um, he, it, it, The Sharks always go into the playoffs almost every year that he's been there, which makes it harder in the draft because he gets later draft picks yeah. every year. Um, one thing that I love about him and his strategy, I guess, of his draft picks is he's not afraid to, to trade draft picks. Right. Um, a lot of people get upset because, you know, our prospects aren't there or mm-hmm. whatever, but when you have such a late first-round yeah. draft pick, I mean, 20 years ago, that, that late first-round draft pick is a second-round pick. Right. Uh, the, the, depending on the year and how mm-hmm. deep, you know, each, each uh, draft class is. Right. Uh, it could be good. It could be bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, there could be a lot of hit or misses. But majority wise, you know, if you're trading a pick for a guaranteed player, you should always take the guaranteed player. I uh, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, assuming they're not super old or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't think you know. There's there's gonna you're gonna get burned every now and then. But I don't think he's been burned too bad over the years. I, I would agree. And you know, talking about his um, his picks and, and not being afraid to trade them away. Um, it, it works both ways. He's also not afraid, and and I don't know how he does it sometimes. I always go back to the Doug Murray trade, the Doug Murray trade <laughs> where he got two second round picks for this guy. Yeah. Who, uh, I mean, I don't want to talk bad about him because he's you know one of the the, the Sharks representatives now and everything. Right. But I mean, he he was basically nearing the end of his career. I don't think he played like one season in Montreal. And well, part of the problem, I think, he went to Pittsburgh. Yeah, he Pittsburgh. went to Pittsburgh and then he played one season in Montreal. Part of the problem is the NHL changed. The NHL mm-hmm. changed his speed. And right. less Doug, right. Douglas Murray. Crankshaft. He's a beast, man. <laughs> yeah. I saw him one time yeah. at uh, 
uh, now now closed CB Hannigan's in Las Gatas. Okay. Um, me and my friends were at the bar, and he's in the corner with a couple other players, and I didn't really recognize. I didn't see him. All of a sudden, this big dude walks behind the bar. I don't know if I should be telling the story. <laughs> walks behind the bar. Grabs two bottles, looks at the at the bartender, gives him a nod, <laughs> walks back to the table. No and way. He's wearing like this. I mean, he's he's a big dude. He's yeah, muscular. He's yeah. wearing like this like medium sweater. <laughs> I mean, the thing was like painted on him, and I was just like, oh my god, that's Douglas Murray. <laughs> he just took two bottles of booze and just walked <laughs> just away with it. Just took it to his table. That's cool. Nice. All right. See you later. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, so <laughs> thanks for the story. Yeah. But yeah. No, I mean he um he's somehow able to get these picks for for guys that they don't really warrant getting those picks. And right. that's just one example, but he's done it several other times. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think he's shown time and time again that he's been able to set the team up for success. Whether or not the players actually do anything with that uh, yeah. is a different story, but I feel like if you're a team that's made the playoffs 10 years straight, missed once, and then, you know, I mean, they, their track record is unbelievable the amount of times they've made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Not many teams have, have made it in such a short span that many times in a row, right? Um, I think the Detroit was was the last one that was way, way up there, right? right? Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I mean, he sets us up for success pretty much every year, and I, you're right, he does get an equal amount of, of hate and, and some love, too. But um, I just feel like the hate tends to outweigh it, and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I think it's just it's this feeling that you know we should have won a cup by now, exactly. or whatever, right? Yeah. And and I, I look back to and I, I have a guy at work who's a Kings fan, and I love I love <laughs> uh, he, I love telling Kings him this. Kings fans are the worst. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I love telling ever him since this. they won the cup, they, they, yeah, both yeah. cups. Well, Ugh. and that's just it. So ever since they won the cup, well, when they won the cup, prior to winning that cup, there was how many years? Forty four. They had the best player ever. <laughs> on their team and couldn't win a cup. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky was on the Kings. Yep. Couldn't bring a cup home. Sharks, <laughs> you know, all right. That's that's my argument too. Sure. It could the Kings were a team since I think the early 70s. Okay. Uh it took the or was it the late 70s? I don't know. Whatever. It, it took it them took 44 them, years yeah. is all I know. Yeah. The Sharks have been around 27 uh, less than 30. Yeah, less than thirty. Less than thirty years. Right. So we still got time. We, and, and yeah, on on LA time, we still have time. As far now, as I'm concerned, yeah. Anaheim trolling us is a little different. Yeah, that Anaheim, uh, you guys, you guys got us there. If there's yeah. any Anaheim fans watching, which there shouldn't be, God, um, I hope you aren't watching. I hope you're not watching. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, yeah. I, again, I feel like he sets us up for success. And again, whether the players do something with that or not, that's really up to them. But. This could be, you know, Doug Wilson's biggest move here, um, getting John Tavares in, and if he's able to do that, we were to, we were referencing the potential cap problems for next season. <laughs> he may Who not cares? have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, if it all goes to hell, right. and and they say finally, okay, you know what, Doug, I'm sorry, you you've had your your time here. It's it's ran out. You're done. He doesn't have to worry about signing all his <laughs> contracts again, figuring out how that's going to work. That, right that, off in the sunset. Yeah, like, pretty good much. luck. Yeah, and you know, and then we'll have John Tavares and a huge contract right. to deal with and everything else. But that won't be his problem. That said, I still wouldn't mind having Tavares. I would rather. <laughs> I'd rather him sign Tavares, and if we miss the, I'm not going to miss the playoffs. But if we don't make a, a cup run. Um, then you know, so be it. But again, you right. can't blame Doug Wilson for that. I think you know you bring in the best player in in the free agency to the team. If you're able to do that, yeah, I don't think you can blame him for anything that you happens. Always want to get the best player. Whenever yeah. you make a trade, get the best player. Yeah, I, I mean, to a certain point, but mm-hmm. most of the time, the, the teams that win the trades are the teams that get the best player. Absolutely. Uh, one other thing, like I was going to talk about, was um, casual fans have a hard time understanding why the Sharks haven't won a cup. Um, I think there's a certain formula to winning a cup. Mm -hmm. One is depth, two is luck, and three (laughs) is health. Yes, health, Uh, absolutely. uh, You put those three things together Mm -hmm. to win a cup run, obviously your team has to be good. But compared to other sports, let's let's compare it to baseball or basketball. Basketball is probably the closest because they have 16 teams. Yeah. Um, The thing with basketball is they're, they're... depth of their teams are not quite there. An eight seed is never going to win the championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen the Kings as an eight th- seed win a championship. Uh, I'm sure there's multiple others. Yeah. But, um, or at least be competitive. Right. Get down to the wire. But right? you, you, we see eight seeds knock off one seeds mm-hmm. all the time. It yeah. happens to the Sharks. Right. Um, uh, 
you don't see that in other sports. Mm -hmm. um, Basketball is kind of a, the best analogy there, I guess. And I would, to, to build off that, when you're talking about um, a, a difference between, like, say, basketball and hockey and uh, going to, say, drafts, for instance, when in basketball, again, I don't really watch basketball much, but my understanding is the players that get drafted, at least in the first handful of, of, of players, like top five or so, yep. they can be inserted into the lineup almost immediately. Same thing with the NFL. Those players are expected to be in the lineup almost immediately, mm -hmm. right? right. Um, that's not the case in the NHL. In the NHL, well, generally speaking... I think the top three guys are usually NHL ready. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Dylan Strom is a good example, though, right? Yep. So. Yep. Um, you've got guys who are extremely talented at the level that they play at where they're being drafted from, but when you get to the NHL level, there's a AHL level right. before that even. So that's the that's also a, juniors if you're eighteen or nineteen years old before right, the AHL. Right. But the AHL is even a tougher league to play in than where they came from right. and you're asking them to make the jump past that into straight into the NHL. So most guys aren't going to be able to do that based off just speed alone. Yeah. Well, the NA, uh, the NFL and the NBA, NBA kind of has a minor league mm -hmm. team, but like it's kind of like... D-League. Yeah, it's the D-League. Yeah. Like, it, very no. rarely are you going to see somebody come <laughs> yeah. up from the D-League and right. come into the NBA. The, the way the Sharks work, I think it's more, uh, or the way the NHL works, is more in line with MLB. MLB has the single, triple... Triple single, A, double Single, yeah. double, triple yeah. A. Um, and you work your way up to get to the majors. Mm -hmm. I think NHL is closely related to that. Um, you'll see guys. What, what's great is is the Barracuda. Yeah, they play in the San, in San Jose now in the same arena, which is awesome. If you've um, never been to a, a Barracuda game, you need to go. The tickets are cheap. Uh, if you bring your kids, yeah. it's awesome because you know if you you have to get up uh, for some reason, your your kid has to go to the bathroom in the middle of play. It's it's a Barracuda game. Yeah, <laughs> so right. it's not too big of a deal, right? It's it's very similar to a minor league baseball game. There's a mm -hmm. lot of gimmicks. There's a lot of yeah. um, things to keep the fans interested. I have a video clip which maybe we can throw in at some point yeah. in time, or whatever. My son uh, and I was so proud of him the first time that uh, we went to a game, and they do this thing called the frenzy, and that's the name of their mascot, who's actually the little orange guy in the back there. But they do this thing called the frenzy when they score, and it's basically everyone stands doing this. And the first goal they scored, he was looking around, just like, "What is going on?" And the <laughs> second goal, he kind of figured it out, like what was going on, you know. And by the third goal, and it's me, this is where I started recording. By the third goal. I was recording the ice and I look over at him and, and he's got his arms up and he's like, ah, and he starts doing this. Like yeah. then everyone else in the arena started doing it. So it was like, he totally caught on, but it's very, it, it's very interactive with the kids. They do have like chuck a puck and all that kinds of fun stuff and everything. So if you haven't gone to a Barracuda game, definitely need to check it out. Yeah. They're very, a lot of fun. Yeah. Great family environment. Okay. So I think that wraps up our first episode of Fin Factor. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, and bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure it took a lot of patience, but please like us, uh, subscribe, ring that bell so you get all the notifications. You know when we're posting. Um, get us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all social media. And don't forget the hashtag DevarsSJ and join the conversation with us. Can't wait to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>